Uh, not so much, actually. We'd we love to do more work. I, I've been talking to some of the other guys about about this. I mean, uh, it's it's quite rare for me to talk to journalists at a conference. Uh, normally, I've been speaking at technology conferences, actually. And um, one thing we really want to do with OpenStreetMap is break out of that kind of geek sphere and uh, move into the into the mainstream. Um, I think journalists are uh, potential users of OpenStreetMap. Definitely, um, you could uh, you could use maps on TV, maps in newspapers, uh, and uh, it's open license, so no fee. Well, we saw some examples of uh, Ushahidi, which is the, um, the system for overlaying uh, tweets and that kind of information. That's layered on top of OpenStreetMap using um, uh, the kind of web map smash up approach. So, bringing in OpenStreetMap as the base layer and putting your own data on top of it. I think that's probably one of the simplest and most effective uh, ways of using OpenStreetMap. Um, but certainly, uh, there's quite a lot of flexibility within the map itself as well because you can get hold of the, the raw data you can render it in your own style so different colors of the roads or or taking different details and removing them to make the map simpler you'll be pleased to know that we do use uh, for example a BBC website all the time to um, to figure out where stuff's happening so uh, we I remember a particular case where there was, there was an earthquake somewhere in China and uh, it was a real struggle actually to figure out where, where it was that they were talking about exactly. So looking at Wikipedia, looking at the geocoding they have in there. Uh, what I was going to say was that, that actually we, we need more geo-information about uh, news articles I think. So journalists have been out in the field and they're talking about a particular place, a particular name of a town for example. It's, it's quite useful to know exactly where that is uh, just, just in terms of latitude and longitude coordinates. Um, and that can be the start of a mapping process then for OpenStreetMap and we can, uh, we can create a uh, nice detailed uh, street map if we can get hold of imagery for example. Um, and that, I guess that's another area where journalists could perhaps help is um, if you have channels through which you can get hold of aerial imagery um, during a or either post-disaster imagery, very fresh imagery, or just um, more high-resolution imagery than we have in OpenStreetMap, then uh, then that's that's one of the things, one of the main sources of information that we use to uh, to create the maps. Um, but we can also, uh, I mean, journalists themselves could contribute directly to OpenStreetMap if you were so inclined. You could you could create the street map yourself using GPS. Um, there's other approaches for gathering data. Well, I think uh, the Haiti example that I showed in the conference today was probably our best example of uh, disaster response mapping. So we really um, we managed to, uh, after the disaster, really pounce on that area of the map, use the aerial imagery that was available and create a quite a good detailed map really fast. Um, and that made a big difference um, and it, it became the only source of a, a good map of Haiti. Um, so that's really the best example we have of, of everything coming together nicely. Um, part of the reason for that I think is because it was quite a concentrated area where the disaster happened, basically the cities of Port-au-Prince and Carrefour um, and aerial imagery came available quite, quite readily. Um, during that disaster, so uh, we were able to plug that into the editors and uh, trace very quickly from that. Um, so we do have this problem of availability of the imagery. Um, so for example, when the Pakistan floods, uh, that was kind of the next big news disaster. Um, and we, we wanted to create good maps of Pakistan, um, but we didn't have quite as good, good uh, high resolution imagery to do that with. Um, so we still managed to do some stuff there, but um, but not as much as we would have liked. Um, so I think probably in terms of best examples as well, I would say OpenStreetMap has lots of great examples of, uh, of really great maps. Um, here in Amsterdam, for example, we have a really nice uh, map generated by the, by the OpenStreetMap community, so local mappers going out and gathering the data. Um, and that's just sat there on OpenStreetMap.org, ready for people to view the map and use it in all the normal ways that you would use a map. But also to download the data, the underlying data of the map, and uh, render it in your own way and do your own geo experiments from it. Well, maps are hugely applicable to all walks of life, right? So. Uh, as I say, this is the first time I've spoken at a, a journalism conference about about using OpenStreetMap. But um, but really, anything anything that uses a map can use OpenStreetMap. And 
and part of the flexibility as well within OpenStreetMap is that you can, um, within the map data, you can set your own tags, design your own uh, kind of information that you want to add to OpenStreetMap. It's quite flexible in that respect. So uh, if you're running a website about uh, vegan restaurants, was one of the examples I've used before, it's quite a specialized niche interest area, then uh, you can add that data into OpenStreetMap. It doesn't show up on the main map, it would just show up as restaurants, but uh, then you create your own custom map based on the OpenStreetMap data.